So for most people, insurance is just a piece of paper they have to fill out when they buy a property or shop for a property. But in reality, you want an expert behind you who can help guide you when you need uh, uh, some help. You know, it's never a problem until it's a problem. And one person who's seen his share of problems and helped customers avoid problems through his history in the insurance industry here in LA is Carl Sussman. Carl, how are you doing? I'm doing terrific. Terrific. Thanks again for having me. And I can't remember how long ago it was that we met, but I, you know, I, I've done business with you and known of you for, I'm sure it's decades uh, through various business iterations. So you're in West Los Angeles. How do you describe your insurance agency? There's a million different agencies. Some are big name companies, some are uh, independent. How do you fit in the, the insurance marketplace? Yeah, I was trying to decide when we first met. I, I think we both had more hair and it was probably a different color than it is now. Yes, I think that's, yes. that's sort of, I'm going to leave it at that. Yes, <laughs> but, definitely true. Yeah, you know, agencies come in all you know shape, sizes, and flavors. You're right. Some will represent one insurance company. Uh, some will, will represent a few. And then the independent agency channel, which is the channel that I work in, represent whomever, you know, whatever carrier they, they you know, have an appointment with. And basically the way that works is, if you have more options, that gives you the ability to try and find exactly what it is that the client needs versus trying to sort of force the circle in the square peg, which is a lot of times what I see happening with people that have, you know, agencies that have one market, two markets to go to. Now, I know you have a wide variety of products, but what would you say is the core bread and butter? Like, What's the most common experience for somebody who comes into your agency? Well, I would say primarily they're they're homeowners uh, and they're purchasing a new home or they're refinancing. They're in some type of real estate transaction and they they're looking to get coverage either because they obviously want to have it. Um, what normally gets them in the door is the lender will say, "Look, we're lending you money for this property. This is our collateral. We want to have proof that there's going to be coverage in place in the event of a loss." And then they'll they'll come our way, and then we'll we'll look around and we'll find the right carrier to be able to take care of the insurance on that property. Now, I met, I, in California, in Southern California especially, you combine two factors. You have expensive homes, and you have homes that are tucked up in areas where we're susceptible to fires. So that must make your business interesting. It is. And, and California is, is a tough market right now. I'll tell you, um, in all the years I've been doing it, I've not seen a market this tough uh, ever. And primarily, it's because, obviously, we had some issues with wildfire <laughs> issues. Sounds funny. Uh, it was a big deal. Uh, we know we had wildfire after wildfire yeah. after wildfire, yeah. and all of the insurance models sort of went out the window, right? The carriers have had, uh, you know, uh, more than a century of actuarial data to try and price their products and decide what areas have what risk of fire. And all of a sudden, those models just, if you'll excuse the pun, go up in flames. So it a lot. Oh, of well, come on now, that's bad. You know what? It came to me. I have to put it out there. Uh, it, but you know what happens now is. You have uh, the, the large carriers are trying to get rate. They're trying to get a higher premium through and approved from the Department of Insurance to try and offset that increase in risk that they're seeing out there right now. We have a very consumer friendly Department of Insurance. So they're trying to keep the insurance carriers um, as low on that increase as possible. And, and what that's doing is putting pressure on some carriers that are saying, well, if we can't get the rate, we're not going to offer a product which is shrinking the available markets that we have to go to. And then the remaining carriers are saying, well, we're just going to charge what we're going to charge. We're going to go the non-admitted route, right? Which is a product that doesn't necessarily go through the uh, regulatory process that the Department of Insurance puts them through. So what we're seeing is sort of the two extremes. We're seeing some carriers that are simply not offering coverage and the carriers that are left by default uh, are being able, are, are pricing things that are, outrageous. I, and when I say outrageous, I've seen premiums now that are six figures, literally six figures. Now we're talking about, you know, 25, $30 million homes that might be in the hills. We're not talking about, you know, a house in the middle of the city, but still I have never even heard of premiums like I'm seeing these days. Six figures. That's not counting a decimal point. There was somewhere that's six figures. <laughs> Just the comma. <laughs> Just the comma. A comma, yeah. six figure. Wow. Okay. So, um, well, that sounds exciting. Um, is your is your customer profile primarily homeowners? Your customer profile more real estate investors? Where do you kind of fit in the marketplace? We work primarily with consumers. Uh, I'm I'm proud to say that we 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 haven't done any direct marketing in 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 literally decades because we're almost exclusively by referral and by uh, our existing clients. You know, they're having kids and the kids will come to us. 
-hmm. the real estate um, agents that are in the area have worked with us such as yourself you know for for a very long time and yeah. you know we've always done well by their customers and i think they're comfortable referring their clients to us because they know you know that we will we will jump through every hoop is that there is to be sure that whatever the right product is we're going to get it for their client uh, mm -hmm. what's interesting is that used to be a lot easier, right? We used to be able to put information into one system and have you know 10 companies come up and then we would sit and go through coverages and try and decide what's best. Now those systems are all but shut down because there are so many less carriers that are even offering coverage. Right. So what used to take you know 10 minutes uh, could take several days to actually right. get done right. And right. we're still doing it. You know, we we haven't taken any shortcuts and, you know, we have meetings every week with all the agents and they're like, wow, it's amazing how much more we have to do to get the same, you know, output at the end. And it's like, yeah, that's, that is the market right now. Um, how's your business operations in post COVID? Are, you, are customers um, first? Are you available in the office? Are, are customers able to come in uh, face to face? And second, do customers want to? Is that are you doing? Is that business returned, or is it still all being done virtual? I, I've always been a bit of a nerd, so we've always been very very tech savvy. So prior to COVID, we already had several people that were working what well, you know remotely. And when COVID happened and uh, people decided they wanted to start working from home, um, they started doing that. And then when things started to become a little more normal, can I even say that? More normal. I don't know. I don't know. I can't take all the slang, the, the new normal, <laughs> the, the way, all that stuff just drives me crazy. But when, when we got to the point where we were opening the office again, a lot of people, especially since our office is in West Los Angeles, they're saying, you know what, I can save an hour of driving each way. Right. Um, do you mind if I stay home? And we were already set up for it technology nice. wise. So nice. it was no problem. So nice. we have a home office location. We do see customers when they want to come in. It's a rarity. Uh, most people, they're very right. happy to talk on the phone. Um, they're, they're used to video chat now, which is something right. that, uh, you know, is a tremendous advantage because you have the opportunity to actually see the person right. and, and, and build some level of trust because these aren't commodities, right? Homes are sometimes more than likely the largest investment most people will have. Right. So, you know, to spend money to be able to be sure that large asset of yours is protected is a big deal. So we do a lot of video conferencing. We do have some people that like to come in. Uh, usually the same people like to come in. And, uh, you know, we have chocolate and, you know, uh, and bottles of water. Oh, and, ho, ho, ho. I didn't know that. Okay. I'll be right there. Whoa, I'll be right over. You know, it, chocolate. It, it, and I'm telling you, right? But you know what's what's interesting also is that we've also been able to bring, as we've continued to grow, people that are not agents that are not necessarily close by, right? We used to have to have people that were within a certain distance of the office right. so they could come in. We have literally people all across the country now. People have either relocated, nice. so we're able to get the best talent wherever they are, and we're not limited by geography of well, who's willing to drive to Brentwood. Nice. Nice, because Brentwood, as nice as it is, if you're not there, it can be tough to get to. So this has uh, made things a lot easier. I remember j just driving three miles in Brentwood to take you at, at the wrong time hours. Yeah, um, there's a few times now, and, you know, I can look out the window and I can see when it happens, where to try and get from, you know, San Vicente to the 405 could literally take 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And that's just unreal to conceive of when you're literally thinking about that's a mile and, you know, a quarter, maybe. Right. But right. it's just pure gridlock. Yeah, no, I've I've, I've lived that, so I, I'm not there anymore. Um, so a lot of my business tends to be probate and trust, where uh, persons are, are now responsible for an asset that's vacant. You know, mom and dad were in the property, and nobody's really paying attention, and they're going through health issues. And next thing they pass, and next thing they're working on affairs. And suppose, hey, you know, we got this house here, and you know, maybe we're not yet, you know, assigned or we are assigned uh, the authority to to deal with it. Um, what's it like getting vacant property um, insured? Is that something that you're able to work with? How quickly can that get done? Yeah, it's interesting because people sometimes forget that they that they can be honest with us, right? Uh, and they might be playing games with the lender, you know, who's occupying it, who's not. And, and we can usually feel that. And I always give the same sort of, of spiel. I say, look, pretend I'm your priest. Tell me the truth. I will not tell anybody I represent you, but please tell me really what's going on because I don't right. want to sell you a policy based on wrong information because if there's a claim, I can't help you. 
So getting a policy specifically that's for a, a home that's in probate or a home that's vacant, which is primarily what goes on, is, is a little more difficult than it used to be. But there are carriers that are still writing that, obviously. And it can usually be done depending on the location of the home and anywhere from uh, a few hours to a day or two if it's somewhere in the hills. Okay. So, so it is possible. It is different, I think. And then the other thing is oftentimes, so the, the other question is, mom and dad are, are alive and have insurance in force, mom and mom or dad pass away, at what point do they need to change insurance, right? Because they had an insurance policy based on their living there and the properties occupied. At, at some point in time, they're not living there. And at some point, it's technically or legally no longer occupied. So at what point do they really need to uh, change the policy? Or is the policy still good? It's a great question. We get this from time to time. And uh, the, the truth of the matter is the policy that's written, if it's written as a homeowner's policy, is assuming and all of the pricing and all of the coverages are assuming that there are people living in the home. So technically, the day that someone is no longer living in that home, the home becomes vacant by policy definition. Now, most policies do have a clause for that. They'll say two weeks, 30 days, you know, and then coverage starts to fall off. What I always tell people, because by the time they get to us, it's usually been vacant for a significant period of time, right. is I'll tell them, look, if there was a claim, you are, you're giving the insurance carrier every opportunity to deny it, because right. it's not as if, oh, this just happened last week and you haven't gotten around to it yet. The property has been empty for quite a long period of time. And the right. types of coverages that fall off tend to be the most important, like fire or vandalism. Liability right. could be a problem. Right. So, you know, we tell people usually when by the time they get to us, they're long past any type of uh, a buffer of where they could try and at least be reasonable and say, look, if this just happened and we hadn't obtained the proper new policy yet. Right. I tell people, look, if you have a. Uh, I can try to sell it as quick as I can, but there are people going to go on the property. You know, there's the buyers, there's the agents, there's inspectors, appraisers. Mm -hmm. Anybody slips and falls, there's no coverage for liability at some point in time. You have this asset that's worth a fortune, um, and they know it, right? They know that's that's an asset that's worth a fortune. It's easy. That's an easy game for them to play. Why do you in, in, invite that in? Uh, and so I try to really encourage people. I, I hate to have them waste money. Um, so when in that case, in many cases, there, you know, when I bring that to our attention, let's say, yeah, but Bill, we want to sell the property. You know, we only need the insurance for 90 days, six months. It, it, number one, is that a waste of your time? Number two, the insurance companies must know that's the game plan. So they're not looking to to save any money on the deal. They have fixed costs, they have reasonable fixed costs. How does that work financially for you know what could be a shorter period of time? It's another great question. I forget this is why we work together because you get it. Uh, you know, oh, I deal with this all the time. So I, you know, my customers ask me and I, and I, yeah. you know, I'm not in the conversation, but I want to find out so I can answer it and then send it to you. Right. The issue is very simple. There are policies for vacant properties that are written on 30 day basis. Um, and again, like you said, the carriers understand that. And so you can get a policy for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, or even if you get it for a year, many of them will prorate a cancellation. And to your point, when you're talking about an extremely valuable piece of property, does it really matter if you have to spend a couple of bucks to insure it? So if somebody slips and falls, number one, it doesn't lock you up and you can't sell the property anymore because there's a lawsuit going on. Or number two, you could be potentially liable for hundreds of thousands or more because of that. It's it's almost the definition of penny wise and pound foolish. We're not talking right. about you know $10,000 or probably even $5,000, depending on the size of the home, We're talking about a couple of grand. You know, to right. get the right type of a vacant policy on the average house. And it can be done, you know, like I said, relatively quickly. So right. yeah, I, I'm with you is I always wonder, why are you doing that? You know, there's, there's, you've got this massive upside once this property is sold, you know, take the little obvious simple steps in the meantime to be sure that you don't lose any of that asset. Right. Normally, you know, in your house, the only people come to your house are your friends and family. Occasionally, you have a risk of somebody else, a vendor or something. But for a house that's for sale, you have more strangers go to the house in a 30-day period than at any time you're home, you know, probably ever. And so you're really at the most risk, I think, from a liability point of view during that time uh, than at any other time that you have a house. And so to me, it's the most important time to have it insured. Um, we also have an advanced program where we'll advance customers' money they're, they're going to be inheriting. So they, they can say, well, I'm not inheriting that property that's worth a million dollars for a year from now. I don't have the cash to lay out. Well, we can advance in that money. And I, you know, I'm not sure uh, if that's something that that 
typically insurance companies don't offer, but it's something we offer as real estate agents as a way to finance that to make it easier for them. So that's a, I have not heard of that before. That's a brilliant concept because yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I suppose it's not unheard of for someone to be inheriting property uh, that's worth significantly more than their current asset base. And right. you know, so paying that additional insurance policy can can be an issue. No, I, I'm not aware of a carrier that will do that. But certainly, if if your organization is doing that, you're doing an unbelievable service to them yeah. because literally you are protecting that asset. And again, right. to your point, you're absolutely right. Not only are you going to have hopefully a flood of traffic, right, of people coming to look at this property, things start happening, right? You know, right. I mean, what if a pipe breaks? There's nobody there. Nobody's right. going to know that the place is filling up with water until it's running down the driveway to the neighbor, right? 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 So you could be looking at potentially catastrophic losses, forget things like fire right. that could, you know, take the value of the property, you know, down to next to nothing. Right. No, it's, it's a, to me, it's a, it really makes a lot of sense and, and to, to get insured and even people are very modest and say, well, but Bill, this money that I'm inheriting is all the money I'm ever going to get. Okay. Then we need to protect it. I mean, you're well, right. The point. <laughs> all the more reason why you need to protect it. I had, you know, and so we advance funds, you know, to do, uh, to put a fence in, you have squatters. So you got to put the fence up, you got to board the house, you got to do a junk out to get all the stuff off the property that's dangerous uh, and the insurance. And, and you know, that, that can all add up to $10,000. But if you're inheriting a million dollar property, then it, it's got to get done. And that just becomes like a business expense. Absolutely. You, one of the things I know that separates you uh, from other agents also is that not only are you an insurance agent, but you're an expert in the field and recognize that. And and I've done a little bit of that, not nearly as much as you are, but you're a regular um, um, expert for attorneys and and, and litigants uh, and defendants uh, in legal matters. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be an expert witness from a business point of view. What is that like and, and what do you do there? It's a lot of fun. Uh, our legal system is unique let's put it that way right and and so it requires in order for the for a plaintiff or a defendant to try and and make a to make some type of a point there has to be an expert that comes in an expert is an actual legal definition that the courts determine to be able to say if that's correct or not uh, you know, the silly example is if somebody holds up a policy that says xyz is covered they can't, the court cannot accept that. The jury cannot accept that unless they have an expert witness that will stand there and say, yes, that is what that says. It's that simple. So sometimes it's very simple. And I do work on plaintiff and defendant cases. I've worked in state court, federal court, and even criminal court. Wow. And um, we'll, we'll get asked very basic questions that, you know, you, we, we, like you and I have talked about, we do it in our sleep because we've done it thousands of times. Right. And then there'll be other types of cases where I'll get called in where there's a little bit more that's that's going on, right? Where I can see it from both sides. And maybe that's right. because I, I, you know, I do plaintiff and defendant uh, expert work, but it's not as clean cut. And I've been asked in the past, well, how do you work on the plaintiff side and the defendant side? Obviously not the same case, but just in general. And my answer is the same. As long as I'm just sticking to the facts and sticking to the truth, it doesn't really matter who I'm representing or which right. side of the fence I'm on, because right. I'm just giving them my opinion based on the thousands of transactions that I've done over the years. Right. Yeah, I've seen I've seen many cases where there's another expert on the other side and he's just doing some things that are kind of outlandish and and, and usually all they do is expert witness work. They're not really a practitioner and, and, and they have a reputation for supporting whatever the attorney wants them to say. Well, yeah, but that's just not the case. That's not really true. So, yeah, well, well there's, there's always the hired guns that are out there. But I'll, I'll, right. I'll tell you one of the things they, that uh, they love to ask and I love to answer is they say, well, when is the last time you saw a situation like this? And again, to your point, most of the other guys that are doing it say, oh, back, you know, in 19, whatever, or back when I was an agent, yeah. uh, they have less hair than I do. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'll tell them something like, well, I think I saw something almost exactly like this last week. Exactly. <laughs> or, exactly. Or, 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 you know, we could go to. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to a client about something like this, you know, a few hours ago. And, and yeah. that just, it, again, it's it's more legitimate because we literally see a lot of these things over and over yeah. again. I think it yeah. actually makes our agency that much better because I'm aware of where the pain points are. I'm aware of when, where there could be problems in transactions. And I take that and I'm sure that all of our agents, you know, hear about it from me. I say, look guys, I was on a case where X, Y, Z happened. Let's be sure we pay attention to proper documenting files, things like that. So when you have that phone call and you explain something, it's important that we document it because if there's ever a question about it, look, we have that documentation to back it up. 
Look, Carl, we, you and I could talk for hours. I, I really enjoy it. I know you're a busy guy here. So if somebody's interested in talking to you, either as an agent professional looking to work with you with their customers or an uh, individual homeowner looking for policy, what's the best way to get in touch with you guys? They can, of course, find us online at sussmaninsurance.com. Um, there, there's the current web page. Uh, or they can give us a call. Uh, we've got, uh, it's funny to say a local or a toll free because nobody cares anymore, but the, the, the local number is the 310-820-5200. Uh, look at that. I still have a fax number on there. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, but uh, it's there. Or if someone really decides they want that toll free number, uh, we've got one of those. It's 877-411-5200. But I don't think more, many people use those anymore. I don't think so. It's just easier to call the local number. Well, Carl, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for educating us today on insurance and the insurance business overall. It's always a pleasure working with you, and we'll talk soon. Thanks again. Take care. Okay.